Welcome, my name is Rebecca Sexton Larson. I'm the Curator of Art and Director of Education here at the Art and History Museum's Maitland. Today as part of the Diversity of Urban Art series, we are gonna be visiting the Maitland Art Center. The Maitland Art Center was founded in 1937 by visionary artist and architect J. Andre Smith. It was Smith's vision to create a place where artists from across the America could come and study and experiment with mediums. As part of the Art Center, we still continue to do classes and still have residencies today. And we're gonna be visiting Jim Hosner, one of our established jewelry instructors. Hi, my name is Jim Hosner. I'm the jewelry instructor jewelry instructor here at Maitland Art Center. I've uh, been here since 1992, but I actually got started making jewelry in 1970 when I was in the Army. Well, you know, 1970, you know, the, the uh, anti-war theme, well, I was fresh out of college and, you know, went to a few marches and I wanted a peace sign to put on my dog tag. Well, you might be surprised to hear this, but they didn't have any peace signs on that army base. But they did have a jewelry class in the Arts and Crafts building, so and that's why I just went in there and I took one look and I said, I looked at the stuff and I said, peace sign, yes. I made one that very day. It was great fun. The next weekend I went back and made six more because all my guys at the barracks said, yes, we want one. And then after that, so I just kept making it. So, you know, ever since 1970, I've been doing jewelry. Uh, I moved to Florida in the early 80s, and uh, oh, a few years after coming here, I discovered Maitland Art Center. And, uh, well, they didn't have a jewelry instructor, and so I said, well, here I am. I've uh, really enjoyed being here. It's been really great, kind of like my second home. But today, if you, uh, and uh, see here, we have, uh, this is the kind of project we're gonna do. Basically, we're gonna start making a, uh, we'll make a ring like this today. And it has the three basic steps of fabrication. Uh, this is silver smithing. And the fabrication technique involves uh, cutting the metal, which is the layout, uh, soldering the metal, which is silver soldering, and then polishing the metal. Uh, the piece and uh, so in this ring then we're going to go through all three steps and uh, <clears throat> we gonna I'm gonna today use this round wire it's uh, 10 gauge and that makes a nice ring uh, some substantial heft to it so that you can uh, It'll be suitable for a, a man. Generally, the uh, ladies take a more delicate kind of ring. So, mostly uh, the size that you want, you know, the client determines that, or you determine that. Today, we're gonna make a size eight. Well, let's, let's make it a size 10. All right, so now we're cutting the wire here. And these are uh, flush cutters. They cut off and they do a nice, nice flat edge. Now, in order to do a good solder joint, what you have to do is you have to have zero gap. That means when the metal fits together, there's no gap. And if you're gonna do jewelry, you're gonna become real familiar with files. Uh, so, I'm gonna file the end here. Then we're gonna bend this into a circle, and then we're gonna uh, make sure it fits good. So, jewelry has three steps. I may have mentioned this. It's three steps. Cut, weld, polish. Right now we're in the cutting. And this is called a ring mandrel. It has, it has the sizes on it and such. Uh, and that helps you when you're making the ring, so you determine what size the ring is. Also, you can do like this. Use it to bend the metal. Now this ring, when we bend it, get it ready to solder, is not gonna be, it's not gonna be round. 
it will be oval shaped. Right? So, what you have to do here is, well, kind of. Can you see the gap there? Yeah, now this is supposed to be zero gap and uh, the rule of thumb is if you can stack two hairs on top of one another and slide it through there, it'll work okay. One hair is good, but if it gets much bigger than that, it just doesn't, uh, the solder doesn't fill the joint very well and then you've got uh, gaps, uh, little nicks in the side of it, doesn't so the side doesn't fall, solder smoothly. So, we got this pretty much lined up here. And it's my, you gotta straighten it out a little bit. Okay. Now the next phase we're gonna do is we're gonna do the soldering. And that would be over at the soldering bench over here. This is the soldering aspect. Uh, this is technically called hard soldering. And uh, we heat the metal red hot then melt in a, uh, a binder, an alloy, uh, that adheres to the metal and holds it. Uh, the, <clears throat> as with uh, any uh, high temperature technique, you're heating the metal hot so it's gonna tarnish, so you have to put flux on it. This is what I use, flux. And basically what it does is it, it keeps the uh, metal clean when it gets hot. So. Put some on here. Now one of the properties of flux is it allows the solder to flow. Solder without flux does not flow very well. So you gotta make sure you got solder on there. Zero gap and solder and clean. Clean is really important. So now the next thing we do is we're gonna heat it red hot. When it gets red hot, here I've got silver solder. This particular one is in, uh, it's in wire form. Uh, solder comes in all kinds of shapes. Uh, it also comes in uh, sheet. Sheet also where you just cut out a little piece and uh, uh, put it in place. It allows for real accurate placement of small amounts, which is uh, it's real important in jewelry making. So the next thing we do is we uh, this is torch, it's an oxyacetylene torch, uh, it's a common name as a plumber's torch. And it's oxygen, I'm sorry, acetylene and uh, atmosphere. So, in order to get this process to work here, first thing you gotta do is you heat the ring red hot. Uh, technically, it's dull red. But the uh, ring will change color. Pretty soon it'll get a little gold color. You right, can see it's kind of gold. All right, there it's gold, all right. Now, right here, the flux melted. So that means we're at 1100 degrees, so we gotta go to, to 14, so put the solder in place and melt it. There you go. It goes, it actually goes pretty fast once you get the process down. Uh, of, of fabrication in the tech, uh, fabrication process, uh, soldering is, is probably one the one process that does not kind of happen you don't intuitively know how to do it you know how to cut it up if something's too long you can cut it off but soldering you sort of got to learn the process but once you learn this the rest of it is designed this right here is a pickle pot that's what they call it but it's the acid solution and what that does is it takes all of the black off and it takes off the uh, flux the flux kept it clean but uh, it's still on there, so this uh, solution will clean it off. And this takes about maybe three or four minutes and it should come out kind of silvery white. The next phase, then we go to the polishing. Yeah, we're back here now with the ring. Uh, I really have uh, enjoyed uh, doing this jewelry work. Like I said, I've been doing this 19, since 1971 is in the Army. But what really uh, helped me was 
after the Army. I had uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and it was uh, pretty intense for, for a number of years. And what got me through all those hard times was the fact that, you know, if I was depressed, I'd said, I don't feel like doing anything, it's not worth it. But I would say, no, Christmas is coming up, I gotta make some jewelry, I gotta make a chain for my sister, I gotta make a ring for my niece who's graduating. So I would go and I would start a project. Sometimes I would make only like minimal, like get the files out so I could work on the thing or do a little bit or solder one piece and then come back the next day and work on it a little more. But it gave me a continuity that I didn't have otherwise. Uh, so it's really, it's really been a help to me. And then once I got out of the army, uh, I continued making jewelry, but I also started taking other art classes, painting and sculpture and such. But Jew is my first love, and uh, it's, it'll always be that way. But here we have the ring. So here's the solder joint right here. I don't know if you can see it here. It's got that little little uh, surface bulge on it. We're gonna have to clean that off and as we go around. It's not too bad on this side, but this needs to be cleaned up. Otherwise, it'll stay there a long time and everybody will say, oh, what a nice ring. Did you make it in camp? But we don't want them to say that. We want them to say, oh, that's a nice ring. Where did you get it? Or how much for that ring? That'd be even better. So anyway, we're gonna do a little filing here. Well, first, before filing, you gotta make it round. Making it round is real easy. You put it on this ring mandrel and my hammer, one of my favorite tools. You just tap it a little bit. Getting be pretty good there. If you just keep whacking it, it will stretch it to another size. And that's one of the ways that they uh, uh, size rings when you go to the jewelry store, they make it bigger. They put it on this thing right here and tap it a little bit. And the side of joint's a little crooked, so we'll do a whack here. Now, now comes the filing. And the filing is the, the surface is curved, the file is flat, therefore the file must follow the curve. So you have to file kind of like this. Otherwise you get flat spots on it, and that's okay. But then it's not symmetrical and it looks like an accident. You want it to look like you did it on purpose. Sometimes though, it's kind of hard to tell. And you just leave it. It's called serendipity. Okay. Oh, one more little spot here. Okay. So now, this is the kind of finish up there. Now that's, uh, to fin do the finished work, you go from coarse to fine. And the files are coarse, so the next thing you go to is the sandpaper. So let me find some sandpaper here. That's right, where is it here? Yeah, right here. I recognize this. It's an emery board. Works real good because it's hard. And uh, on these kind of surfaces, uh, it, uh, it, fits real, it fits real good. <clears throat> okay, next we're going to polish. Okay. Rub it up. Polish it. Now, ring. This is called an outside ring holder. What it does is it holds the ring on the outside so you can we'll do that next. polish the inside. Okay. 
the outside that would be this one and once again a little more polish here One thing about jewelry is it conducts the heat really fast, so when you polish these things, it gets hot real fast. Uh, it conducts heat better than copper, much better than copper and aluminum. You can probably figure out why you don't have a silver radiator in your car, right? This it's called a jeweler's cloth, and inside it has the red polish on the cloth. All right. Well, might not surprise you, but that's called jeweler's rouge, and that actually is the second step of polish. Remember, I said coarse to fine in jewelry polishing. This is the coarse polish, and then the rouge on the cloth is the fine polish. You can also get the rouge in a tube like this and use it with a wheel, but with silver, you don't really have to do the rouge polish very much to really get the best luster and shine from the metal. So, this, there it is. And that's it, project for the first day.